Hey guys, today we're going to introduce the idea of significant figures. If you were in my class freshman year, you were introduced to this idea already, so this should be a quick review. If not, this is something we're going to do for this unit only, so it's just an introduction. You will use it in future classes and possibly in college. So in a measurement, the number of significant figures is very important. It is a number of digits believed to be correct by the person doing the measuring. It includes one estimated digit. So essentially, the first couple numbers are ones that you are 100% sure about, but the last one you might be guessing based on the location between two of the lines. So the number of significant figures is directly linked to the measurement. If a person wanted to measure a pencil, they could use the standard system that we use in the US, which is inches or feet. Or they could use the metric system, which the rest of the world uses, which is centimeters or meters. So looking at this picture, we can see that each of these pencils start over here and end on this end. Now I know that they're not starting at zero, but I'm still going to use this ruler to explain some things. If you notice this first inch, there are lots of individual little lines in between the bigger lines. Between the first and the second inch, those lines go away. So this first inch gives us a more accurate measurement. Now if we look down at the centimeters, we always have those itty bitty individual lines. So meters and centimeters are more accurate measurements because they have more measurement lines to compare to than measuring inches. So we can say that we have 37.15 centimeters of measurement. So we know the 37 is accurate, we know that the 0.1 is accurate, but if it's in between those two lines, we are estimating that 0, 0.5 value. If we take a measurement, I want you to be able to tell me the number of sig figs. So this ruler, we have it on the centimeter side because we get a more accurate reading. Our measurement starts at 0 and it ends over here. So I know for a fact that it is at least 18 centimeters long. So 18 point something. I know this middle line is a point five, point six, point seven. I know it's at least 18.7, but that blue arrow is somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. So I'm going to estimate that it's right at the halfway mark. So the length of this pencil is 18.75 centimeters. We are reporting three sig figs, three figures that we know are significant and accurate, and one estimate. Okay, so this is something that I may ask you to do. So like I said, while I will personally not make you measure sig figs, like we did on the last slide, that's just an example of how you would go about doing that in a college course, you will eventually be held responsible for that, especially if you go into science as a career. But for now, I just want you to be able to tell me how many sig figs a digit or a number value has, so, which means that you need to know the rules for sig figs. So if I give you a number value, I want you to be able to tell me there are three sig figs in that numerical value. Okay, so rule number one. This is the easiest sig fig rule. Any number that is not a zero is automatically significant, okay? So for 123, this would tell us that we have three sig figs because all three of those digits are not zero. For the example of 10, the one is obviously not a zero. The zero is, so we would only have one sig fig. For 3,456, we would have four sig figs. So if it's not a zero, it is important. Rule number two, I like to call this the double or nothing rule. Both of these statements have to be true for this to matter. So rule two, three, and four all have to do with zeros. So double or nothing, both have to be true. If the zero is to the right of the decimal and to the right of a non-zero number, it is significant. Okay, so for this first example, 12.00, these two are automatically significant because they are not zero. This zero is to the right of the decimal and to the right of a non-zero. 
this zero is also to the right of the decimal and to the right of a non-zero. Notice they do not have to be next to them, they just have to be somewhere on the right. So the second example, 123.0, these three are automatically significant because they are not zero. This is to the right of the non-zero and to the right of the decimal. So again, we have four sig figs. Now this last example, the three is automatically significant. Now this first zero, it is to the right of a non-zero, but it is not to the right of the decimal. So that is not significant with rule two. The second zero, it is to the right of a non-zero, but it is not to the right of the decimal, also not significant. The third zero is to the right of the non-zero and to the right of the decimal. So this example only has two sig figs. So again, rule two, double or nothing, or we could call it to the right, to the right, like that song, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. Any non-zero that is to the right of the decimal and to the right of a non-zero is significant. Rule number three, I like to call the sandwich rule because you need at least three things to make a sandwich. Two pieces of bread and something for the middle. So any zero that is sandwiched in between two non-zero numbers is significant. So this first example, the nine and the seven are automatically significant because they are non-zeros. Both of these zeros are sandwiched in between so those are significant, we have four sig figs. Now this next example, the five and the six are automatically significant because they are not zero. This zero is both sandwiched in between two non-zeros and it's to the right to the right. So it is to the right of the non-zero and to the right of a decimal. So this one has three sig figs. So, so far our rules are rule not one, so far, our rules, rule one, any non-zero number, rule two, double or nothing, it has to be to the right of a non-zero and to the right of the decimal. Rule number three, the sandwich rule, it has to be in between two non-zeros. Rule four essentially states, any zeros that are left are not significant. So we're gonna do our little check marks for the number 10. Rule number one, that one is significant because it's not a zero. Rule number two is double or nothing. There is no decimal, so we cannot use rule number two. Rule number three is sandwich rule. There is no second non-zero, so we cannot use rule number three. So this is one sig fig for that value. 0 0.0078, the seven and the eight are automatically significant. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is double or nothing. These two zeros are to the right of the decimal, but they are not to the right of a non-zero number. So there's nothing else over here. Those are not significant using rule number two. Rule number three is the sandwich rule. Since there's no other non-zero number over here, none of these zeros are significant. So we only have two sig figs for that example. So we're gonna do a couple practice problems and I want you to tell me number one, how many sig figs, and number two, which rules did you use? So 900.06, first we're gonna say number of sig figs. So the nine is significant, the six is significant. Now with double or nothing, the zero is significant, it is to the right of the nine and the decimal. And with sandwich, both of these zeros are significant. So we have five sig figs and we use rules one, two, and three. 0 0.0004, that four is significant, that's using rule number one. Rule number two is double or nothing. These three are to the right of the decimal, but there is no non-zero, so they are not significant. There's also no other non-zero number, so we cannot use sandwich rule. So we have one sig fig, and we use rule one only. Technically, we use rule number four because anything else is not significant, but rule number one is the important one. Okay, so 8.10000. The eight and the one are automatically significant. Now, rule number two is double or nothing. All three of these zeros are to the right of a non-zero and to the right of the decimal. So one, two, three significant values. So we have five sig figs, rules one and two. 
and then 501.040. 5, 1, and 4 are automatically significant. This is sandwiched. That counts. This is sandwiched and double or nothing. This is double or nothing. So 6 sig figs rules 1, 2, and 3. So when we get to class, I do want to make sure that we have time to practice this, just identifying not only how many sig figs, but also how you found them and using which rule. So I'll see you in class tomorrow so we can do that.